Hi, welcome back to the second part of Ultimate Sally Wars Tutorials for Beginners. I'm Ryan, your host, and I'm going to use my own sexy voice in this episode to teach you everything you need to know about extrusions in SolidWorks from scratch to end. So, we are here now. First thing first, what is an extruded bus or base? First of all, my question is why SOLIDWORKS people couldn't agree on one name and kept both names in. Regardless, no self-respecting SOLIDWORKS user will call it extruded bus or base. You just call it extrude. You just extrude it, buddy. What is extrude? Extrude is a feature that SOLIDWORKS offers you to create a volume that has the same geometry, not necessarily, throughout the length of your part. So for example, a cube could be a rectang rectangle extruded to a cube. A cylinder could be a circle extruded into a cylinder. Okay, let me show you. You will find this feature here in the features tab, duh, and it's called extruded bus or base officially. I don't want to read the description of the feature for you. You can read it for yourself. When can you use this feature? When you already have a sketch. If you don't have any active sketch in your SOLIDWORKS and you click on this feature, it will automatically redirect you to the sketch tab and asks you to draw your sketch first before you can use it because this is one of those features in SOLIDWORKS that requires a sketch. Some features are not sketch based, this one is. And when I say sketch, there are two types of sketch. Close sketch and open sketch. Close sketch is a sketch that is not open, duh, like a circle. So we have our circle here and I will click on extrude the boss or base First thing you will notice is that the view will change from normal to the sketch plane and it turns into a uh, trimetric mode. And on the left, the other thing that you will see happen, you will see that the property manager here changes to the property manager of, the of this feature, which is extrude. Property manager is like a control panel that allows you to control and use the feature you're using. There are different sections on it. Let's go over it first, then I will cover all the sections for you one by one. In the first section, we will see from, I'm not gonna click on anything yet. Second section is direction one. Third section is direction two. After that is thin feature, and after that is selected contours. Now let's see what each and every one of these sections allow you to do. From, is a very, very, very helpful tool or sub section that Extruded Bus offers you. And it's a very, very, very underrated and underused. On default, from is set to sketch plane. Sketch plane is the plane that you have drawn your circle on, okay? So if you don't change anything, the extrusion starts from that. If you change it, for example, you have different options. Uh, surface, I will, I will go over all of them one by one, but for now, if you go for offset and set an offset of 10 millimeters, look, it will put a 10 millimeter distance between the sketch plane and the start of the extrusion, okay? Because the rest of the extrusion is like here in the direction one, and you have this offset here. You can uh, flip the offset to the other side of the sketch plane. I just basically declared what offset is. Now you have different options and those options can be used in different examples. I will do it right now. In order to explain these other choices you have in the from section of your property manager in the extrude bus feature, I had to make this part first to show you the example. Now imagine we have a body already created here and you're working on your second sketch, which is on this plane here with a distance between them. And you want to extrude this circle, but not from here, but from this surface. Of course, you can use offset again and set, measure this distance between these two planes, set it here and do this, but who would want to do that? I don't because first you have to go measure it. Easier way would be to actually set it to surface face plane, then it asks you to define a surface face or plane. Duh. For that, you will click on this surface and you tell SOLIDWORKS that I want this surface to be the start of the extrusion for this sketch, which is on a different plane, okay? And then you can um, finish it off here. I will get to this section, don't worry. Next one, vertex. In order to show you vertex, I had to create a part with some edge 
and corners. I couldn't have made the example on the previous body. In order to show you vertex, I had to create a part with some edges and some corners. I will set it to vertex. Vertex is basically anything like an edge or a corner. In this case means a corner. So I can pick any point I want on this body and it will be the starting point for my extrusion. Look, this circle, this area will be the extrusion and this point will be the starting point of it. A lot of your friends and colleagues probably don't know this technique, this from, which is very useful. And they will go ahead and create a new plane here first and then you start drawing the, this circle on the new plane. You don't have to. You have this option that gives you all these advantages without having to create a new plane. So let's see what the next section of the property manager offers us. Direction one. Direction one, unlike from, allows you to define where your extrusion has to end and it comes with its own sub options. If you are working with one single sketch and one single body, you don't have any existing body in your drawing mode, you will see less options in this menu. And if you have some other bodies in there, some options will be added. So first I will cover these and after I will create the body, I will introduce you to the options you don't see right now. At the moment, you will see blind, which is on default activated when you click on extruded bus. You have up to vertex, you have up to surface, offset from a surface, up to body and mid plane. Direction one refers to this direction. Only on one side of the sketch plane, the extrusion is happening. So you're not creating any volume on the other side of the sketch plane. That would be the work of direction two, but I will show you in a minute. At this moment, we are on blind and blind actually requires you to define only one variable that would be the length of your extrusion which you can define here let's just set it at 50. you have another button next to it and this is called reverse direction that flips it to the other side so direction one is relative it could be either on this side or the other side of the sketch plane but it cannot be on both sides when it's on blind. So you can flip this, okay? I can click okay and go ahead and show you the other examples. So look at this. I already have a cube in my drawing mode over here and I'm doing my second extrusion on a circle on a different plane. So these two are not connected. Let's see what extra options I get here. I have through all, which is added new, up to next and I have up to body, okay? So let's see what each and every one of these do. If I set it to through all, it will extrude it until the extrusion covers the whole length of the bodies existing already in your drawing mode. So if the next body was would have been here, the extrusion would have been up to the last point of that body. So that would be the definition of through all. And if I flip this, it doesn't make any sense because on the other side, there is no body. The through all would end and it doesn't even work. So the next one is up to next, which I have personally never used. I don't know if I should go over this, but I don't think it would be something you would need right now, assuming it's an Ultimate SolidWorks tutorial beginner. So the next one you could use is up to vertex. And vertex, just like in the front section, a little bit more, could be a point or a or an edge. Okay, I can pick this edge on this body, and it would just be it will be extruded to that edge or this corner. You know, it doesn't matter. You can pick edge or a corner, but no surface. So for the next one, we have up to surface, which is very useful. This sub option allows you to extrude your geometry up to a surface and this surface could be a planar surface or it could be a curved surface okay in this case i changed this part to a curved surface to make it more challenging here when you pick up to surface you will see a new extra field here that asks you to pick the surface so for that i will pick this surface and you will see how the extrusion will look like it would not be a perfect cylinder it would just adjust itself to the surface okay the next option is offset from surface just like up to surface offset from surface also requires you to define a surface so you do that here but on top of that you also have to define a value for an offset so i just set it to five millimeters 
it means my extrusion starts from here, goes up to here, follows the format of this surface, the pink one that I selected, and has an offset value of five millimeters to that surface. So it doesn't reach to that surface, and but it follows the value. This value of the offset can be reversed and flipped to the other side. If you check reverse offset over here, this 10 millimeters could be on this side of the surface or on the other one. On top of that, you also get another option called translate surface. By definition, it allows you to use the true value for the offset. Look, use true offset or translated offset surface. If you check it, each and every point on this end surface of your extrusion will have the same distance uh, to the surface. If you don't, it kind of uses a projectile the offset. The decision is up to you which kind of extrusion you want to have. You have been seeing merge results not only in this option but in many other options now, now that we have the extrusion. It wouldn't exist if it would have been our first extrusion. Take a look. When you don't have any existing volume in your designing mode, you don't get the merge results option. But when you already have an existing volume and you're creating your second or plus volume in SolidWorks, you will see this option, merge results. This merge results is also really important. It is for when two bodies are interacting like this. So if I click OK, I will have a cube-like volume here and a cylinder here, which is interfering, it's going through the cube. Now the question is, should these two be merged into one solid body or do they have to be kept separately as two different bodies? If you check it, you will have one body and the sign for that is the interference section of it will be highlighted by an edge. You, do you see this dark line here? I can even click on it and highlight it also on the other side. But if I go and change it and uncheck merge results, then you don't see any line here and you cannot pick any edge here because this is one body going through the other body. And the evidence of that can be seen here. You have two solid bodies. One would be this, one would be that. So be careful. This is really important to know when to merge your bodies together and when not. If these two features would have been part of one single body. For example, you're working on one object. So sure, you have to go ahead and merge it, but sometimes you don't want to because they don't belong to the same body. And that would be for the merge results. The other option would be up to body, which is easy. You just pick the body. And in this case, it will take the closest surface of that body and it will extrude it to that body. And the last option is mid plane. When you pick mid-plane, one thing happens. You will have extrusion happening on both sides of your sketch plane the exact same amount. So if you increase it on one side, the other side will be increased exactly the same amount. And the other thing that happens, direction two will be removed because you're already covering the other side of the sketch plane, right? So you don't need a different direction two. So let's go back and set it to up to surface and I will pick this surface and that will be my direction one. But I'm not finished. I want to do something here as well. But I also want to have something on the other side of the sketch plane at the same time before I click OK. So I can activate direction two. And direction two doesn't have to be set on the same option that the direction one is set on. So I can set it to blind and just define a value for it like that, or I can just drag this. So on this part, I have set it to blind direction two and the value is at 155. On the other side is direction one is set to up to surface and I have defined this surface. So that would be the volume I'm, I'm creating. At the same time, I can decide whether or not to merge these two bodies together or not, right? Both direction one and direction two offer you a different sub option, which is called draft you can turn it on on default it is set on off if i click on draft it will be activated and the unit for draft is degrees see what happens you can set it to different angles and it will taper your extrusion in a way you can draft inward and you can draft outward same for direction two you can assign a value for your extrusion 
Look, seven degrees, seven degrees now. My extrusion is not like a cylinder anymore. It's more like a cone. Seven degrees outward on direction one, seven degrees inward on direction two. I can also change its value. I can also make it outward. Like that. So that was draft. The next section in the property manager of your extrusion would be thin feature, but I'm gonna skip it, go to selected counters, and then I come back to uh, thin feature. Selected counters is for sketches like this, which contain more than one closed area. Look, I have this area, I have that and that. There are three areas, so on default, SOLIDWORKS, when you click on extruded bus, it doesn't know which area it has to extrude. So this is the section that allows you to choose that area. If you click on it, it you can pick on the surface and pick on this surface. Then your extrusion will be limited only to, do, to those areas that you have highlighted and won't affect this area in the middle. So that would be the work of selected contours, okay? So far, we ended up on a shape like that. Let's see what other options we have. I said there is thin feature left. Thin feature is interesting and it has a bug in it in SOLIDWORKS, which they haven't fixed or maybe they don't refer to it as a bug. That's why they don't want to fix. So I have a new sketch here on this plane. I will go to features tab and click on extruded bus. I will activate thin feature and see what happens. Boom. So my sketch actually stays hollow and the volume will be created around it. Now you can here on direction one, assign the length of your, in this case, cylinder. Let's just put it at 1,500 like this, too much. Let's make it less 500 like that. And over here on the thin feature, you can define the wall thickness of it. I put it at five like this. Now, let's see, this wall thickness is being created outside of the circle. If I click on this reverse direction flip button, it will be created inside the circle. And it also allows you to choose the direction. So one direction would be just like direction one on the other side. If I click on mid plane, it is still at five millimeters. So the wall thickness of the volume would still be at five millimeters, but 2.5, half of it would be on the other side of the sketch. Half of it would be on the inner side of the sketch. And if I click on two directions, it will ask me for two values. So on the other side, five, on the inner side, 10. Okay, let's just put it back on mid plane like that and see what other options thin features offer us. End caps, what happens if I click on it? Look what happened. It will close the open ends of the cylinder. And for that, I can define a value that is the thickness of the caps. If I set it at five, it will also be set at five. So, okay, now one interesting point. So far, we have only been working with closed sketches. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw something like a line and don't close it. So it is called an open sketch. Can we extrude an open sketch? Let's see. If I go ahead and click on extruded bus, it automatically activates the thin feature and I cannot even deactivate it. Why? Because the sketch is open and there is only one way to extrude an open sketch and that is using the thin feature okay so don't wonder why you cannot deactivate the thin feature if that happens in your solidworks it means the sketch you're using is probably open or the bug that i mentioned earlier your sketch is in fact closed it's a typical circle but you're editing your feature once you use the thin feature and click ok you cannot undo that even though you go back and try to edit, you can edit everything else, but you cannot undo thin feature, unfortunately. I don't know why. It's SOLIDWORKS 2019. They fix it already. They cannot. So once you use thin feature and then click OK and you realize it was a mistake, you have to delete it completely and redo it. OK, now for this one, we are covering the feature scope. I'm going to draw a new sketch. 
like that and extrude it over these bodies. Look, we have one body here. It's not connected to the other one. Before I click OK, let's just show you. I have one body here highlighted in blue. I have another one here, another one here, and another one here. Now I just drew this sketch and I'm going to extrude it over these three solid bodies. And I'm going to check merge results. Now feature scope appears. So you're creating a new volume and it's covering these three solid bodies and you're saying, yes, please merge it. And SOLIDWORKS is like, to which one? To all of them? To some of them? To one of them? Which one? So you define that in the feature scope section. Automatically on default is always on selected bodies, auto select. It's usually not right. So I uncheck auto select and I will immediately face a new section. Okay, I can here define, okay, merge it only to this body, ignore these two. And then when I click okay, well, this is too big already, but you still see the lines of these two bodies. This is here and this is here within it, but the other one, you don't even see it. It's merged into this uh, section. So do you think it's over? No, it's not over. As the last point, I go ahead and click on extrude bus for this new sketch that I have. Look, this sketch is being extruded on default, all of them so far, normal to the sketch plane, okay? We, we never talked about that. But there is a way to change that. And that is always here in all the options. There is an empty field here and it will it's optional you can define a direction of extrusion, okay? If I click on this, it will require me to pick an edge to define the direction of the extrusion. For example, let, let's say I will go ahead and pick this edge. See what happened? Now the extrusion is not normal to the sketch plane anymore, but it's parallel to this edge. Or if I pick this edge, see what happens? It will make it parallel to this edge. So you have that option as well. This was extruded bus. Well, you have the negative form extruded cut. You usually, not 100%, get all the options that you have in extruded bus, but with some minor changes. For example, you have through all, through all both, which you didn't have in the extruded bus, but you get it in extruded cut. And the definition of the feature scope can be seen really good here. For example, um, extrude I'm using extruded cut for this sketch over these three bodies. There are three bodies here, and I will tell it to only reduce this one. And when I click OK, these two will, stay, will still stay here, even though they were impounded in this extruded cut feature. So that was the second part of Ultimate SOLIDWORKS tutorials for beginners. And in this part, I just covered everything about extrusion in solid. I have already done that in the text form. If you forgot anything and if you would like to read and see the pictures on my website where I put weekly tutorials for members only. You need a membership, you need to sign up for that and you will find the link for that in the description below. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and stay tuned for the upcoming videos because I'm going to do what I did for extrusion for every single feature in SOLIDWORKS along with the exercises that we have planned for you, but they're coming a little bit later, but they're coming, okay? All right, let me know what you think of this video. This was Ryan and I delivered this message. So I will see you next week.